day our pirate prentice rises from indentures free. Strong his arm and keen his scent is he's a pirate now indeed. Here's good luck to Frederick's ventures, Frederick's out of his indentures. Two and twenty now he's rising and alone is fit to fly. Which we're meant on signalizing with unusual revelry. Here's good luck to Frederick's ventures, Frederick's out of his indentures. Pour a pour the pirate sherry, fill a fill the pirate glass. And to make us more than merry, let the pirate bumper pass. Yes, Frederick, from today you rank as a full-blown member of our band. Yeah! My friends, I thank you all from my heart for your kindly wishes. Would that I could repay them as they deserve. What do you mean? Today I'm out of my indentures. And today I leave you forever. Oh, why, this is wholly unaccountable. A keener hand at cutting out a canada or scuttling a tipiano never shipped a hand spike. Yes, I have done my best for you. And why? It was my duty under my intentions. And I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error, no, no matter. The mistake was ours, and I was in honor bound by it. In error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon my well-loved roof. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better to have it out at once. When Frederick was a little lad, he grew so brave and daring. His father thought he'd apprentice him to some courtesy fairing. I was, alas, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot. To take and find this promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering, and I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing, mistaking my instructions which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy apprentice to a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> a mistake it was to make and do me into a vile knot. I bound him to a pirate, you. Instead of to a pilot. <laughs> I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of a radical maid of all work. And that is how you find me now, a member of your shy lot, which you wouldn't have found had he been bound apprentice to a pilot? <laughs> oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. Right, sweet one, I have long pardoned you. The words were so much alike. They were. They still are. 
Now, years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, have pity on me, my friends. For such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself, heart and soul, bound to devote myself to your extermination. Poor lad! Poor lad! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in according to the guttex of thy conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. And besides, we can offer but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why. But alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. Why not, my lad? It's only half past eleven. And you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True, <laughs> and until then you're bound to protect our interests. Yeah. yeah! Well, then it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never talking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. <laughs> there is some truth in that. And then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. <gasps> of course not! We are all orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans. And so we had to let them go. One would think Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylum, which we know is not the case. Oh, but hang it all. You wouldn't have us be absolutely merciless. There's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Was ever man placed in so delicate a situation? And, and Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart, what is to become of her? Oh, well, he will take you with him. Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I've been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I've seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is quite possible I may be mistaken. True. <laughs> what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is on the whole plane. Oh, Ruth is very well. Very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. <laughs> Do you really think so? <laughs> Yes, I do. Well, then I will not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her and in consideration to you, I will leave her behind. <laughs> no, Frederick, this cannot be. We are rough men who lead a rough life. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right saying that there are not, there's not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. No, Lord! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. <laughs> I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. <laughs> <laughs> no, Frederick, this cannot be. We are, I, I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. <laughs> Better far to live and die Under the brave black flag I fly They play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart Away to the cheating world go you Where pirates all are well to do But I'll be true to the song I sing 
And live and die a pirating. For I am a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. Yes, I am a pirate king. Wobble, wobble, a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a robber pirate king, a robber pirate king. When I sally forth to seek my prey, I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well-bred monarch got to do. But many a king on a first-class throne If he wants to call his crown his own Must manage somehow to get through More dirty work than ever I do For I am a pirate king it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. Yes, I am a pirate king. You are a robber pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a robber pirate king. A robber pirate king. Well, Ruth, I'll be quite candid with you. You are very dear to me, as you know, but I must be circumspect. You see, you're considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. Ruth, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, dear master. I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I am sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? I have been told so, dear master. Ah, but lately? Oh, no, years and years ago. <laughs> what do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth. I believe you, for I'm sure you would not practice upon my inexperience. Well, I wish to do the right thing, and if you are, I say if you are really a fine woman, your age shall be no obstacle to our union. Who ventured to approach our old but inaccessible lair? Can it be Custom House? No, it does not sound like Custom House. Confusion! It is the voices of young girls. If he should hear them or see them, I am lost. By all that's marvelous. A bevy of beautiful maidens. Lost! 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 How lovely. How surpassingly lovely is the plainness of them. What grace, what delicacy, what refinement. And Ruth, Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And so am I not so. And now I see you're plain and old. I'm sure I'm not a jack so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to plot so. Your face is lined, your hair is gray. It's gradually got so. Faith is for a 
one to deceive me, I who trusted so. Master, master, do not leave me here, here you go. Faithless woman. Master, master. Faithless woman. Master, master, do Faithless not leave me, do not leave me, here you go. Faithless woman, do not deceive me, I who Before these gentle maidens, I dare not show in this alarming costume. No, no, I shall remain in close concealment before I can appear in decent clothing.
I wonder where we are. And I wonder where Papa is. We have left him ever so far behind. Oh, he will be here presently. Remember, poor Papa is not as young as we are. And we have come over a rather difficult country. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone. Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings who ever set foot on this enchanted spot. Except the mermaids. <laughs> it's the very place for mermaids. Who are only human beings down to the waist. And who can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. <laughs> Tails they may, but feet they cannot. <laughs> but what are we to do until Papa and the servant arrive with the luncheon? We are quite alone. And the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes and stop oh. oh. and paddle. Oh. Oh. Yes, 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 the very thing. <laughs> stop, ladies, pray. Oh. I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under this peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you to speak? I am a pirate. A pirate? Ah! Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end, O oh pure and peerless maidens, O oh blushing buds of ever-blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale! Yeah. 
little sisters say, Propriety we know, Says we ought to stay, While sympathy exclaims, Freedom from whatever, Play at other games, Leave them here together. Her case may any day, Be yours, my dear, or mine, Let her make her hay, While the sun doth shine, let us compromise, our hearts are not of leather. Let us shut our eyes and talk about the weather. Yes, yes, let's talk about the weather. How <laughs> beautifully blue the sky, the glass is rising very high. Can take a ride, I hope it may, and yet it rain. But yesterday, tomorrow it may pour again. I hear the country wants to make it. People say, I know not why that we shall have a warm to light tomorrow.
Yes, yes, I am a major general. For he is a major general. He is above the major general. familiar with it. What are you? We are all 
A single gentleman. Oh. Yes, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Papa, don't believe them. They are pirates. <gasps> the famous pirates of Penzance. <laughs> the pirates of Penzance. I have often heard of them. <laughs> All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today, and who means to lead a blameless life evermore. But, but stop a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. But we waive the point. We do not press it. We look over it. <laughs> oh, an idea. <laughs> and you mean to say that you would deliberately rob me of these, the sole remaining props of me old age, and lead me to go through the remainder of my life unfriended, unprotected, and alone? <laughs> Well, yes, that is the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, yes, Here we are again. I, I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan. Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say, orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan. I don't think we quite understand one another. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. Well, as I understand you, you're merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it, but not often. Stop. I can see where we're getting confused. When you said orphan, do you mean orphan, a person who's lost his parents, or often frequently. Oh, I beg your pardon. I see what you mean. Frequently. Ha! You said often frequently. No, only once. <laughs> exactly. You said often frequently, only once. <laughs> In dismal fate, forgo your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy, an orphan boy, an orphan boy.
your story, but it doesn't diminish my glory. For they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters. If I hadn't an elegant diction, indulged in an innocent fiction, which is not the same category as telling a regular terrible story. It's a terrible story, but it doesn't diminish your story. For they would have taken your daughters over the billowy waters. It is easy in elegant diction to call it an innocent fiction.
conscience to say something that will relieve my father's sorrow? I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit here night after night in this draughty old ruin? Why do I sit here? In order to escape the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. I came here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family sculpture. But you forget, sir, you only purchased this property a year ago, and the stucco on your baronial castle is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. <laughs> With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they are, but I know whose they are now. <laughs> and I shudder to think that their descendant, by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought dishonor upon what I have no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. Be comforted, sir. Had you not acted as you did, those reckless men would have assuredly called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing. I can assure you, such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous? At, at what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only wait my order. <laughs> then, Frederick, let your escort lion hearted be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon this dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. <laughs> Still to us it's evident 
These attentions are well meant. Go to the Go to the And so with laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. 
We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we risk both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox, that, paradox, that most ingenious paradox, with quips and quibbles heard in flocks, but none can beat that paradox. A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> However, I've no desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the Astronomer Royal, has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four, his days shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. And through some singular coincidence, I shouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are victim of this tongue-tongue arrangement, having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so by simple arithmetical process, you will easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet if we go by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, let's see. Yes, yes, with yours, my figures too are free. <laughs> <laughs> forgiven yourself if you had discovered you'd killed two of your comrades. My comrades? Well, I'm afraid you don't quite understand the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us... Until I reached my 21st year. No. Until you reached your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you're as yet only five and a quarter. You don't mean to say you're going to hold me to that. Oh, no. We only remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty. Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist upon nothing. We are content to point out to you your duty. Your duty. Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. And my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling, and I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. But my duty is before all. At any price, I will do my duty. <laughs> Bravely spoken. Come, you are one of us once more. Plead on, I follow. Oh, horror! What, what is, is the, the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, I cannot do it. And yet, as one of your band... Speak out. We charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley, the father of my Mabel. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did. It breaks my heart to betray the honoured father of the girl I adore. 
but as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you that General Stanley is no orphan. What? what? More than that. He never was one. <laughs> am, am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared to work on our credulous simplicity? Oh, our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We shall gather our band and attack Cromorden Castle this very night. But stay. No, not a word. He is doomed. Away, away, my heart's on fire. I burn this rest is up to do repay. This very night, my vengeance dire shall clutch itself and go away, away. Away, away, and I expire. I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish ire. It strikes me to the core. With engines falling, victors well out bright. With vengeance, how the pirates on the sides. Our nature's sturdy, softened with his lies. And in return, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, yes tonight, tonight the traitor dies. dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. The curse of lies. They will not in sorrow. The ones of spot. It is the cherish. They all the part. Do live down as a perish.
forth the eye of age shall be, I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. Oh, it seems so long. Swear that you then you will be true to me. Yes, I'll be strong. By all the Stanley's dead and gone, I swear.
When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, sent enjoyment is just as great as any honest man's, honest man's, our feelings be with difficulty smother, difficulty smother, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. I'll take one consideration with another, with another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burgling, not, not a burgling. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime, hide in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother, on his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the the sun in the sun I'll take one consideration with another with another a policeman's lot is not a nappy one oh when constabulary duties to be done to be done a policeman's lot is not a happy one Station, let's bear. 
Hush, hush, not a word. I see a light inside. The Major General comes so quickly hides. Yes, 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 the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Yes, yes, the Major General comes. Tormented with the anguish dread of falsehood on the tone. I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache no peace at all enjoys. Then as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. Ha! No. All is still in Dale on Hill. My mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the breeze. Softly to the river comes the loving breeze, setting nature all a quiver, rustling through the trees. Through the trees, and the broken, rippling measure laughs for bearing up, while the poplars in their pleasure wave.
and attack the capture. Frederick, save us! Beautiful naval, I would if I could, but I am not able. He's telling the truth, he is not able. With base deceit, you tricked upon our feelings. Revenge is sweet and flavors all our dealings. With courage rare and resolution manly, for death prepare unhappy General Stanley. Is he to die unshriven on a nailed oh, or him? Will no one in his cause a weapon wield? Oh, save him. Yes, we are here for the to the seal for So to the scapulary pirate's deal. Oh, of whom are beauty? <laughs> 